Hello beautiful souls. It's Nadia and I'm back today to talk about star seeds. In this video I want to talk about what a star seed is and I'm going to share five signs that you are a star seed. Alrighty my friends, so let's talk about star seeds. Now first I always like to share what inspires me to make these videos and with this one there's a beautiful soul that I've connected with on YouTube. She's such a beautiful soul. Uh, she goes by Bambolina on YouTube and she's very very in touch with spirit, sees spirits regularly and we've connected in a lot of ways and she always calls me a star seed and um, the last time she said it, last week, it kind of like stuck with me throughout the day, like I kept thinking about it. And so I said, okay, maybe that's a sign that I should make a video about star seeds. So that's why I'm making this video. Thank you, love. So first, I want to start by saying that there's a, an astronomer named Carl Sagan that said many years ago that we are made of star stuff and that everything in the universe Everything on Earth originated from stardust. 93% of the mass in our bodies is stardust. The calcium, iron, carbon, nitrogen, and other key elements. So we are star stuff. Now when I thought about that, when I really thought deeply about that, when I first heard that, it kind of just like it really blew me away because I started to realize that no wonder when we go through an awakening we start to feel connected to everything and everyone. We start to feel this connection and that's because we are made of the same stuff. Um, and then as women our cycle, the average cycle for a woman is 29 days and the lunar cycle is 29 days or, or 29.5 days so even with me when I started going through an awakening I noticed that my cycle would start with the full moon so there was definitely a connection to us and the universe and the stars now there are 100 billion galaxies and then there are billions of stars in our Milky Way galaxy alone. So just imagine that, how much is out there that we don't know about. And when you learn that we are not just a physical body, but we are energy that never dies and is actually transferred, it would be very limited thinking to believe that we don't come from or haven't been anywhere except for on this planet. That would be very limited thinking. Now, star seeds. According to seers and channelers who have access and who have who connect with the Akashic records, star seeds are advanced spiritual beings from other planets and other realms who incarnated on earth to participate in the planet's evolution, to be light workers, to heal and to inspire other human beings to do the same. Uh, star seeds possess spiritual and scientific knowledge going back thousands of years. And this is uh, being incarnated on the planet is something that star seeds actually agreed to do and chose to do. Now, a part of choosing to do this, you actually agree to forget about who you really are. You forget everything. You forget your mission. You forget that you were once a fifth dimensional being or higher, and you actually lower your vibration to become a third dimensional being to participate in the planet's evolution and help on the planet, to be a part of the planet. Now, when I was 
learning about this, I wondered, and I was just like, why do you have to forget? Why can't we be, you know, as we grow as a child in our younger years, why can't we remember then? Why do we have to wait until we get older to actually get information that actually resonates with us? Why can't we remember when we're younger who we are? Why can't we know where we've been and that we were once a higher dimensional being? Why can't we know that throughout life? And then it just hit me and it made so much sense. Imagine if you actually knew from a child where you've been, you remembered all of your lives, you remember that you were a higher dimensional being from another place. And now you're here dealing with this world. Imagine if you knew that. If that were the case, you probably wouldn't even be able to relate to other humans. You'd probably just want to go back. You probably wouldn't even want to fulfill your mission. Like, think about this. When we start to go through an awakening, we already seem like we can't relate to people. People are already like, she crazy. When you start speaking spiritually, people think you're nuts. When you go through an awakening. So imagine if you already knew who you were at a young, you would, you would not, you probably wouldn't even want to procreate. <laughs> You'd probably just be to yourself somewhere hiding away. You'd probably be miserable if you knew everything about where you from, where you were from and who you actually were. You wouldn't be able to relate to humans on a human level. So how on earth can you actually help anyone when you are just so disconnected? And so like, you know, you want to go back. You just don't want to be here. So that's why we have to forget. It makes so much sense when I started to think about it. We have to go through trauma. We have to be a victim. We have to cause pain to others. And we have to go through these things so that we can heal ourselves and then be able to help other human beings heal themselves. When we actually know how to get through the trauma and how to work through it, then we can actually help others. So we agree to forget everything, to be put into families where no one understands us, to be put into families that are broken and have like traumatizing childhoods. And like we are meant to go through those things. That's what gives us the ability to learn and to heal ourselves. I'm sure it doesn't work that way for everyone. Some, some beings and some of us probably can't take it and never fulfill the mission that we were sent for. But the reason why we are put in these situations is so that we can actually learn from them and give someone help and give someone uh, the, the, the blueprint for how we got through certain things. That's why we have to forget. But we remember, or we start to remember, after we go through all of these things, we remember when the time is right. Now, I want to share five signs that you are a starseed. Number one, since childhood, you always felt like something about this world doesn't seem right. You may feel like you don't belong. There's something that you're meant to do and you're unsure what it is. You just feel like there's something that you should know that you don't know yet. That's a sign. Just having those thoughts as a child. Um, finding your purpose. I've learned that Losing your ego equals finding your purpose. Losing your ego connects you to God, connects you to the divine. And that is how you find your purpose, by letting go, trusting, and the ego is blocking. The ego is blocking you. So losing the ego, first of all, living in the moment and just be, that is what helps you to find your purpose. 
but as a child you probably just you're very confused about it and you're just not sure but yet you know there's something that you don't know that you should know it's just a thought process that you may go through as a child as a child I used to on one hand I would feel alone because I felt physically alone because my mother died when I was two so I felt like I was a lonely little girl and sometimes even as I got older and I started to awaken I would feel a little teary when I would go back to my feelings as a child it would make me feel a little emotional but then on the other hand I felt like something or someone was always there like something was watching me like I was being watched that's how I felt when I was younger I felt like something was always there like I wasn't alone spiritually something was there that I couldn't see but physically I was alone I also felt as a child that there was something big that I was going to do when I got older I gotta you know when you as you grow you and you don't know what it is you think it could be anything so in my teenage years I probably thought I was gonna be a big-time model or something because people used to say you should be a model and so I thought that but that's definitely not the case <laughs> but um, I definitely felt as a child that there was something that I'm supposed to do something that's big when I get when I get older that was me as a child but um, just these type of thoughts as a child that is a sign that you are a star seed number two you are fascinated with esoteric supernatural you're fascinated with other cultures uh, psychics tarot card readings these are signs that you are a star seed um, when I was younger, I was fascinated, I remember, with Egyptian culture. I remember in my teenage years, I would, I remember having this big book called Egyptian Civilization that I would read, and it had these, these images in it of these gigantic heads, sculpted heads that were made out of rock, that were they dug from under the ground, that was hidden and stuff like that, and I was really fascinated by that type of stuff. I was also fascinated by psychics. I got in trouble for running up the, my dad's bill calling the psychic hotline, which was a waste. <laughs> uh, but I was fascinated with psychics, also with tarot card readings. These are things that I was fascinated with, but was ashamed to talk about that and share that because of how we have learned in many ways that it's bad, which I've come to learn is very untrue. It's not bad. I'm pre, I'm pre, there's people who use things for the wrong reasons, for negative reasons, and that is with everything in the world, not just with psychics and, and tarot and stuff like that. You find people that's do, that does wrong who supposed to be living the way that society says that you're supposed to live. So you find negativity everywhere, but it's not necessarily something bad. But I felt ashamed of it, so I wouldn't tell anyone. But I definitely was into that type of stuff. Um, also, I've been approached by psychics many times in my life. Very strange. Uh, at least four to five times. The last time, uh, my hubby and I, last year, we went with some friends over by Disney to have dinner or something. And this lady approached me and was like, oh, she's like, I like your dress. And then she was like, I think you're a very spiritual person and gave me her card or I want to talk to you about something or some things. And that has happened to me several times in life, which I find very interesting. Um, however, as I've gotten older, I definitely feel that a lot of it isn't genuine. Sometimes they're trying to get money, so I just, as I start to awaken and as I start to get older, I realize that the answers are within me and I don't need to talk to a psychic to get any information. Uh, some of us, we're not going to run into the, you know, psychics or people that are going to help us because it's meant for us to learn these things on our own. That's the case sometimes. But if you find yourself fascinated with different cultures and, and you know, uh, uh, supernatural things and stuff like that, that is a sign that you are a star seed. Number three, you may be very intuitive, psychic yourself, 
You may have one or more gifts, clear audience, clear sentience, clear voyance, clear cognizance. I have videos on each one of those, so you, you can look at that and see if any of those gifts resonate with you. But you may be someone that doesn't follow the rules of society, kind of edgy. You may be a very spiritual person and not controlled by the constraints of religion. These are all signs that you are a starseed. The thing is that we all have psychic gifts and we actually don't think it's psychic because it comes across so subtle. For many of us, when we say things like, you know what, I don't trust something about that person, I don't trust that person, or I just knew that was gonna happen. All of those, those are, that is psychic gifts. It's just that we see on TV what a psychic is with the crystal ball and see in the future. That is not always what a psychic is. There's different levels to it. But we all have these gifts. It's just so subtle sometimes that you just think it's just that you're smart or you just know something when it actually is one of these gifts. It's a psychic gift. We've just been fooled. That's what it is. We've been tricked into believing that something's wrong with this We've been tricked into believing that that's not what it is. And we've been even poisoned with the food that we eat, which stops us from being able to tap into these gifts. I'm not even gonna get into all of that, but if you are someone who is a very spiritual person, intuitive person, uh, you find that those gifts, you, you may have one or more of those gifts, that is a sign that you are a star seed. Number four, you've had paranormal experiences, astral travel, astral projection experiences, near-death experiences, these are signs that you are a starseed. Uh, I remember I had a near-death experience that I actually didn't even look at it as a near-death experience until I started to awaken and then I started to remember. Like I said, when you start to go through an awakening, you start to remember things that you totally forgot over the years. So in 2010, and this happened, I found this out when I was making the angel number 1010 video. And I mentioned this before. But in 2010, I had an ectopic pregnancy. And this was 10 years ago. When I went to the doctor for that pregnancy, I felt like something wasn't right and I asked the doctor to give me an ultrasound because, you know, my mom had ovarian cancer, my sister had a, she had an ectopic before, you know, if something doesn't feel right, I asked him. I was in, I intuitively knew something wasn't right. And he told me, oh no, that's an the ectopic is not, you know, hereditary thing, like, but he didn't give me an ultrasound. A couple of days later, it ruptured and I was, blacking out in the house, pupils big, ambulance came to the house, big old mess, I was rushed to the hospital. It was a near-death experience. And the crazy thing about this doctor's appointment before this happened was he gave me the due date for this pregnancy, and the due date was 10 10 10 Now I thought that was so crazy at the time, it was so like funny to me, but I knew nothing about angel numbers at the time, so I didn't even think anything about it, but I posted it on Facebook. And in the angel number 1010 video, I scrolled back. I went to Facebook, scrolled back 10 years in 2010, and I found that post. And I actually screenshot it and I posted it in that angel number video. But the significant thing I found in that, uh, the meaning of angel number 1010, one thing stuck out to me. It said, this signifies, this number signifies the end of one situation, but something spiritually significant comes out of it. Now it blew me away when I then remembered this and was like, oh my goodness. So that was the end of that pregnancy and the spiritual thing that came out of it was a near-death experience. Oh my goodness. So I wonder if I met with the divine at that time. But it was definitely a near-death experience. It was very scary. I remember after it, I looked different. My daughter started crying. She was the oldest. She was the only one I had at the time. And she started crying because I looked different. I was swollen after the, coming out of surgery. And I remember this nurse that just wouldn't stop looking at me. She just kept looking at me. I come out the room and I had to go walk around and stuff before they could let me go home. I had to get blood. They gave me blood, all kinds of stuff. But I was um, walking around 
the hospital and this latest nurse just kept looking at me and kept looking at me and I'm like, hi. And then she finally says to me, you are here for a reason. You lost so much blood, I'm just, I can't believe you're here. You are here for a reason. And none of that even stuck with me at the time. It wasn't until going through an awakening and seeing this number and the message that it sent me, I was like, oh my goodness, wow. And that was the near-death experience that may have triggered this awakening. It may have been a part of me getting to this point today. It's just so funny how long it takes sometimes. But that was one of the very significant near-death experiences I had that is linked to some form of spirituality. Aside from that, I've had astral projection experiences and that was kind of scary because I didn't know what was going on. I just remember this being conscious. It's like, it was just very hard to understand at the time until I started researching and I realized, okay, so my body was sleeping, but I was conscious. I was awake, or my spirit was conscious that my body was sleeping, but my soul was awake. My spirit was awake and was in another place. And this is where I would see the butterfly, it's like I was in the dark and it was like this glow-in-the-dark butterfly and then there was someone talking to me I would hear these voices and it was like my body was vibrating and buzzing I would see sparks of electricity and I just didn't know what this was and I would get up and just be like what in the earth like I just thought it was one of the symptoms of an awakening and I'm like what is this what is this what what, what does that mean and then I would also keep running across this astral travel, astral projection. And then when I read up on that, I was like, oh my goodness, that's what it is? That's what that was. That's what the sparks and the vibrating is. It's your spirit separating from the body. It was just like, oh my goodness, like I couldn't believe it. Blew me away. And I also made a video on astral projection as well. But if you've experienced astral travel, that is a sign that you are a star seed, as well as uh, paranormal experiences. I had one night in the living room, something or someone, and I always keep thinking that it was my dad, whistled in my ear, like blew in my ear, like, like that. And I was just like, okay, what was that? And I told my husband as I was going to bed, like something and somebody is here and blew in my ear when I was on the couch and it, it, it's, it's so funny how before you start to awaken if something like this happened you would be so scared and freaked out and with going through an awakening you start to lose fear because that comes from the ego so as you start to lose the ego and lose fear then it's like okay it's not so scary it's more like oh like it's just amazing like I cannot believe that there it's one thing to believe that there are spirit beings that are around. It's one thing to believe that, to, but to actually know it because you've experienced it, that's a whole nother level. So if you've had experiences like that, that is a sign that you are a star seed. And number five, you are interested in information about star seeds. Like, I mean, isn't that a sign in itself? Like if you, same thing with an awakening. If somebody's not going through an awakening, they don't care about this stuff. They're not even gonna listen to stuff like this. But if you are interested in learning about this stuff and you're searching for information and you're trying to find out if that is a sign alone, it says a lot. Even if you don't feel a lot of these things right now, you'll probably feel it at, at some point. But this is leading you there. You're kind of learning about it before it happens. So this is a sign that you are a star seed. If you're just interested in the information and you can take the time to watch a video talking about it or read about it, that is a sign alone that you are a star seed. In closing, what I want to say is do not allow this information to be some kind of ego trip type of thing for you. None of us are better than anyone else. Okay, and whether you are a star seed or not, any one of us at any time, whenever it's time, can expand our consciousness, no matter whether you're a star seed or not. 
Star seeds may have this spirituality that is linked to their ancestors and their lineage, but they may not ever intend to connect with their higher self. So whether you are a star seed or not, you can expand your consciousness when you are ready to do so. So don't allow this to be some kind of, oh, I'm a star seed. Like that's the reason why I don't really like to even get into the labels that much. There's all types of star seeds. You've got all these different names. You've got the uh, Palladians, the Assyrians, the um, Andromedans. Um, then you've got the the indigos, crystal, and rainbow children. You've got all these different names that I don't even, you know, just to know that you are linked to something other than this planet is information enough. So don't let it go to your head in any way. We are all, we are all, we all have the ability to expand and to awaken and to, you know, if it's right for us, if it's the time for us, if it's, if it's meant for us, that is what it will be. And that's it. So that's all I wanted to share in this video today. I'm almost at 2,000 subscribers. Thanks to you all. I thank you all for joining me. Thanks for being a part of this channel. Thank you for connecting with me. I appreciate all of you. And I'll see you all soon. Peace and blessings.